Hi, and welcome to our talk on speaker anonymization with distribution preserving X vector generation. I'm Henry Turner, and this work was completed with my co authors Julio Lovisoto and Ivan Martinovich. We're all from the University of Oxford, and this is presented as part of the Voice Privacy Challenge special session at Interspeech 2020. So, firstly, why speaker anonymization? As we increasingly use more and more voice interfaces and voice systems, our voice data is in turn stored in many more places. This voice information is personally identifiable information, which means that you can discover many characteristics of us just from the voice. Furthermore, the things we're saying may be personal in nature, and we may not want people to be able to link our, us back to our voice. As such, voice data leaks can compromise individual privacy and using data from other sources is often, often possible to determine who was speaking something. So firstly we're going to cover the system setting which gives us the following scenario. A speaker wants to hide their identity while still allowing all other downstream goals provided by a voice service. This means I want to be able to interact with the system completely normally but I don't want them to be able to compromise my privacy in the future. An attacker who wishes to uh, attack the system will have access to one or more utterances from the speaker who's in the system and wishes to re-identify those who, are, who have used the system. Um, and this scenario is given to us by the Voice Privacy Challenge 2020, which also provides common data sets and an evaluation framework. Further to this, it also gives us a baseline system which we build upon with our system and improve. So our work began with an observation of the outputs from the baseline system. And this was that the pseudo X vectors created by the baseline system have much higher interpopulation similarity than natural X vectors. So an X vector is a 512 length vector uh, extracted from a voice sample which can be used to identify a speaker. So if you have multiple utterances by a speaker, all the X vectors should be very similar for that individual and the X vectors between two different individuals should be different. And what we find when we analyze the similarity of these X vectors is that we get uh, when we look at the fake X vectors generated by the baseline system, they're all much more similar to each other than you would find in a natural population. So we can see that in both of these figures here. For both the males and the females, the similarities for natural X vectors from normal people speaking are spread out across the similarity, whereas the distribution is very concentrated towards the similar end for the fakes. We further looked into this by conducting a TSNE analysis uh, and when we grouped a pool of all the fakes generated by the baseline system as well as the same number of original X vectors and conducted the analysis, we see that the two are almost separable and that the original X vectors are much more diverse and distinct from the fake X vectors that were generated. So we have an explanation for this. Our explanation is that the baseline system works in the following way. So suppose the X vectors are in fact a 2D uh, vector and they're plotted on this figure and yellow is my new speaker who I want to generate my fake X vector for. So the way the baseline system works is like this. First I select uh, the f a, a number of the furthest away speakers. So in this example we'll be using five but in the baseline system it selects the 200 furthest away. From here I then select a subset of these, in this case three, and average them to give us this green pseudo X vector. In the anonymization system, I will thus transform the person who would be identified as yellow to being identified as position green. Now suppose we have a person who's right in the middle. This gives us this target radius, and averaging three of these would give us an X vector perhaps here. We then repeat this with more in the middle, and we see that actually we begin to cluster more of the X vectors towards the center. And as we're doing this average, this will repeatedly happen. In fact, for the baseline system, we average one-sixth of the entire pool of speakers. This brings all of the X vectors in and results in an underutilization of the X vector space. This gives us the aim of our, our work, which is to encourage pseudo X vectors that reflect the diversity of naturally occurring X vectors. This means we hope to get something like this. So for these three yellow original X vectors, we might get the three green ones, and there should be no dependence on where the green one is based on where the yellow one is. So why do we do this? It will be less obvious that a privacy reservation has been applied to the system and thus make it less likely that an attacker would decide to look into this. Furthermore, by doing this we will have increased diversity between the set of anonymized voices, which means it's easier to tell two anonymized voices apart and if we anonymize the same person's voice multiple times they'll be more distinct. 
this in turn retains entropy in anonymized voices. We also get the added benefit that by using our system, we no longer have to ship a pool of X vectors. Instead, we can just ship our generator model. This alleviates any privacy concerns of those whose X vectors may be contained in the pool. Finally, because we only focus on generating X vectors, this method could be used in conjunction with other anonymization methods that also have the X vectors as a component within them. So how does our method work? We create an X vector generator by fitting both a PCA and a GMM to a large pool of X vectors. For our X vector pool, we use the initial pool that was used by the baseline system, but augment this with more data using both the Voxeleb1 and Voxeleb2 datasets. This generator is then used in conjunction with the rest of the baseline system, where we extract initial features, generate a fake X vector, and then use this for speech synthesis. No, we also include an optional similarity check here, which we did not present in our results today. But this similarity check means that if we generated an X vector that was too similar to the original, we could repeat the generation, thus preventing us from transforming the voice to another voice that was very similar to the original. So the next step is determining the optimal parameters for our PCA and GMM models. And our goal here is to minimize the similarity between the distributions of similarities in the natural and generated X vector populations. So if you think back to our earlier graph, we want to be able to generate X vectors that have a same, the same similarity distribution as those that occur naturally. So how do we do this? Well, we use the kolmogorov smirnov test, which lets us compare how similar two cumulative distributions are. So as we can see in this figure, the blue line represents uh, the X vector dissimilarity distribution from naturally occurring X vectors in the Voxeleb dataset, and the red line is the baseline system. We then fit the GMM with increasing numbers of components going right and increased PCA variance being retained on the going downwards to try and get the closest fit to that blue line. In the end, we settled for 20 GMM components and 95% of variance retained. We didn't opt for maximum variance retention as we didn't want to overfit our model and create X vectors that were too similar to one another and had no natural, no random variations within them. So this brings us onto our Voice Privacy Challenge 2020 results. The first thing to highlight is that when we compare the original voices with the anonymized version of them, there is actually a decrease in performance in the equal error rate. We think this may be caused by the fact that we no longer force vectors through the averaging to ideally be distant from our original ones. So if you think about our 2D visualization, any original X vector that's in any of the corners of that would produce an X vector that's definitely quite a long way away and thus will be distinct in the EER. However, this system doesn't do that and we may end up with X vectors that are closer together especially when we consider quite small pools of speakers, as in both of these data sets. We do, however, note that in scenarios where we, can, where we examine the anonymized enrollment utterance against a differently anonymized trial utterance, we get an improvement in equal error rates. And this is what we would expect to see with our system, as by using our generator, we ensure that each X vector generated for an individual is diverse, and thus, if we anonymize the same person twice, we will not get two voices that are similar. We also note that there's a disparity between the results for males and females in both of the two data sets shown here and in all of our results. We think this may be because the X vector extractor has better performance on men than women. If we look back at this graph again, it's notable that for the naturally occurring voices, the similarities are much more condensed for the females than the males, which means that the, the X vector extractor has a harder time discriminating between female voices than male voices. This could be because there was an imbalance in the data that was passed into the extractor. Equally, this imbalance could be, because, could be caused by the extractor in the uh, evaluation system for the challenge being biased in the same way. Moving on to our word error rate results, these are broadly the same as those of the baseline system, with a slight increase in word error rate and therefore worsening of performance in the LibriSpeech dataset and a small improvement in the VCTK development set. This is probably because the overall anonymization system is mostly unchanged with all the changes occurring in the X vector creation, and most of the word error rate problems are likely to be introduced by the resynthesis of the audio. So to conclude, we noticed an improvement when comparing the anonymized enrollment utterances and the anonymized trial utterances 
which we believe is due to the increased diversity created by our generator of pseudo X vectors and thus creates increased diversity in the voices. This is what our system set out to do, and by using the generator we reduce any dependence between the original X vector and the new pseudo X vector. This improvement came at the expense of a minor degradation in performance on the word error rate. However, we think that this is fairly small and may not be noticeable in practice. As a result, our technique greatly increases the diversity of X vectors in the anonymized voices, which increases the utility of the system, particularly when we apply anonymization to the same voice multiple times, but without intending to anonymize that voice to be the same pseudo-anonymous speaker. Furthermore, our technique removes the requirement to distribute a pool of X vectors, which may uh, compromise the privacy of those who are included in the pool, as we can now just ship the trained models. And it can also independently be used with other techniques that anonymize the audio with X vectors at an earlier stage, but perform later stage processing. And this, our technique could thus be used in conjunction with those. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you're interested, the code is also available on GitHub, so please check it out. Thanks.